anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Um, okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm okay, Jared. Uh, I can't say the rest for uh, Buckeye Twitter, but uh, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, you know, I'm. My expectations were pretty low coming into this. Like I knew, I knew today was gonna not be great. So, I think I'm doing better than most because I had my, ex- my expectations pretty low. Um, mm-hmm. not getting Uyunglele hurts. I was sort of counting on Uyunglele coming, coming through. Um, yep. Nike straight up bought and paid for a lot of guys today. Um, Uyunglele and the uh, Ajani, the transfer from Rhode Island. He ended up going to Oregon, right? Like that was that news broke before he broke, but whatever. Um, not according to Big Dave. Um, who's Big Dave? What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, it's it is what it is. Like there there were a couple losses that I was not counting on that turned. Oh, Mateo's dad is Big Dave. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Um, he can say whatever the fuck he wants. He's an adult. Rule number one. Yeah. Rule number one. Rule number one. Yes. Having Auburn yeah, steal food off your plate hurts a little too. Listen, Hugh Freeze was straight up paying for kids before it was pause, uh, semi-legal. Why? Why? Why should him being at Auburn change any of that? I mean, Oregon is closer to home. USC is even closer and they were like the school, like it was Ohio State and USC, Ohio State, USC, Ohio State, USC. And then all of a sudden it's Oregon. Okay. Oregon just overnight. All of a sudden it's Oregon overnight. Yeah. it. Yeah. There's quite a few people out there too that say that flat out said, if he chooses Oregon, then college football is, is truly broken. <laughs> Oregon flip Nova set. Yeah. The whole reason Nova said didn't want to come to Ohio state was because he got, he got an offer from his dream school. Okay. Good. Good for him. Now he's at Oregon. Bama's still the giant in the room. Yeah. They got money. Um, so like a lot of this is sort of reignited, like everyone being upset at with, towards Ryan Day. Pick your prepositional phrase, your prepositional word of choice here. Um and the safety that was leaning Notre Dame. Oh yeah, he Oregon out of nowhere there as well. Um yeah. Couple of shockers going to Colorado. Um but I think I think Dion's going to get at least any cornerback he wants, any defensive back he wants. I think he carries that sort of cachet at least yeah. with the defensive backs. So, you know, he, he convinced the kid to, he convinced the kid to go to a, you know, an FCS school with, you know, just because he's Deion Sanders. Um, plus it's Notre Dame. Yet yeah, Notre Dame's not going to break the rules. Ohio State's not going to break the rules. Um, Texas A&M laid the groundwork last year for, hey, everyone. Guess what? The NCAA is not going to enforce these rules about promising kids NIL deals before they come. Texas A&M proved that. No one's going to enforce it. And eh, everyone go ahead and cheat. And now if you're Notre Dame, if you're Ohio State, What are you going to do? If you if you're saying, no, 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 we're going to play by the rules. What are you supposed to do now? Play ball or just get worse. That's the thing. You know, this is why, like, steroids are bad, right? This This is why we don't do steroids in sports. It's like, well, you know, it's that's the player's body. If they want to ruin their body. 
then that's all that's their choice, right? Well, no, it's not because if you're not enforcing the rule, then you basically have to do steroids in order to even stay in the league in order to mm-hmm. compete. If you, if you want any chance to compete, it, it's like, it's like doping and bicycling. Everyone got super mad when, and like we, there's other reason to be mad at Lance Armstrong. This isn't me like a whole out defensive Lance Armstrong, but like, Everyone got mad at Lance Armstrong for doping, which is fine. Be mad at him for doping. But then, like, as the years went on, it it turns out that literally not only was he doping, but so was all of his competition. Like, everyone in bicycling was doping. You know what I mean? So that's... No, but Kyle, I'm making, I'm making an analogy here. If you're Ohio State, if you're Notre Dame, at what point... Do you start doping? At what point do you start doping? Because you either, if no one's enforcing the rules, if no one's testing, if no one's enforcing the rules, it, it it's kind of it's kind of like the whole. With some schools, they have a higher standard higher standard of of your education. Like you can't come here unless you have this kind of score. To come into to come into our school sure and and so maybe maybe some schools will lose out on those top commits because well maybe they don't have high enough um a high enough grade a high enough uh act sat school or score whatever the case may be is is that what we're going to run into now we're we're going to have schools who who are trying to follow the the proper way to recruit but if there's nothing being enforced these scores are just going to fall back they're going to fall behind and yeah it's i i I really don't know what where this is going to head to i just know this is a very very slippery slope right now oh no we're down the slope my man we're down slippery slope conversation was two years ago. We've done rolled down the hill at this point. We've rolled down the hill at this point. So, and, and by the way, I'm not saying I know the answer to this question. If you're Gene Smith, what do you do? Cause everyone wants to blame Ryan day, but you know, we need to go a level up on this. So, so there's two, there's two things. Either one, you, you, you do what everybody else is doing until right. the NCAA actually does something or two. Hey, if you know something, show your receipts, right? Show the well, receipts. Well, and that, and that goes back and that, that sort of pivots, uh, pivots us into the conversation of tampering, right? Um, you have there's kids. Multiple, there's multiple coaches that yeah. said that. At, yeah. Look at the um. Oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank on his name. The UNC quarterback. Um, yeah. Mac Brown pretty much said, "Yeah, there's school." I think it was actually contacted him and giving him money, offering him money, and he chose to stay loyal and stay at UNC. Right. That right there is tampering. Yeah. There's by no the way, answer but Brian. That. That Brian is tampering. Yeah, and Brian Hartline said the same thing at the beginning of the season that all sorts of people were coming at his guys. Yeah, I mean. Literally, we've heard every co- and Kyle. I don't know if you can find the quote on it. Ryan Day addressed this during his press conference today. Did Emmert step down? He is stepping down. I don't think he's actually down yet. Um, the NCAA has fallen apart under Emmert's watch. The biggest failure here is that the NCAA put all of their energy, all of their time, all of their resources in fighting NIL instead of setting up a system to regulate it. So then the floodgates open and that's why the hill's so damn slippery. And that's why we're now at the bottom of the hill is because there's nothing in place to enforce anything. And back to what we're talking about with tampering. And I'll, I'll throw Ryan Day under the bus on this one as well. Mm-hmm. If you know something and you also know that the NCAA isn't going to do shit about it, take your receipts to Twitter. 
Take your receipts to Twitter. The NCAA doesn't do shit. Not until Sports Illustrated or ESPN or someone reports on it, then the NCAA will look into it. Well, guess what? Be your own goddamn media person. Hey, I know for a fact because the player showed me the text messages and the player gave me permission to post these text messages to Twitter that X school is going after my players. This is tampering. This is illegal. NCAA fucking do something about it. So in uh, when so you either show the receipts or you shut the fuck up about it. So Ryan Day Wednesday uh, during his press conference uh, talked about uh, on college coaches not specifically calling out to other programs uh, that might be tampering. And he says, quote, it's not a road that certainly I want to go down. Why not? I don't think I don't think there there's any benefit to it. Bullshit. 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 <laughs> yes, that is okay. complete bullshit. Can can I decipher day? Remember when we used to do deciphering day? Yes. Let me tell you why. Because it the the coaching fraternity is a close knit fraternity. You say uh, day. You, you can call day names you want all you want, but literally every coach is not doing something about this. Call him whatever you want, but literally he's. He's shoulder to shoulder with all the other coaches about not doing anything about this. When you were talking about this fraternity of coaches, what you're really saying, if we're being honest here, if you're Ryan Day, what you're really saying here is, I don't want to make any enemies. I might need to hire these guys. I might need these guys to hire me one day. I have to go to Big Ten Media Day with these guys, and I don't want it to be awkward. Doesn't stop other coaches. Some what other do you coaches mean? Don't care. Uh, no. Look, 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 what do you okay. mean? Who's okay. who's call, who's 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 posting receipts to Twitter about tampering right now? No, not not about tampering, but who's well, about, but okay, but who's posting? Who's posting evidence about illegal? I mean, the closest thing no, we no, got, no, think- the closest thing we got was Saban insinuating the Texas A&M bought their class last year, which, by the way, Saban in the end ended up apologizing for. Saban ended up apologizing for that comment, even though every fucking buddy knows it's true. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying there. But but he apologized for it. <laughs> Reason number two, no, no, but, don't no, want to no, make no, enemies. Reason number one, don't want to make enemies. Reason number two, no one wants to be in front of a camera saying or leaving evidence on Twitter saying, I have evidence to the fact that other coaches are tampering and then get caught tampering themselves. And you can say the same thing about illegal NIL recruiting. You don't want to you you don't want to be the guy who calls it out and then gets caught for it. And you don't want to make enemies among your coaching friends because it'll make it harder to hire and be hired. Mm hmm. That, that, that's that's one of the things that I think um, I don't think we've really criticized we've really criticized uh, Coach Day on. I know some have some people in our Discord has too. Is does does Ryan Day need to be friends with everybody? Like I, I feel there I feel that sometimes Day is might be too nice of a guy and um and it show and it shows from time to time here and is that going to bite him in the butt? Is this Right Why is he? Saw. I I don't I don't understand the too nice of a guy thing. He got in both Shiano and Harbaugh's face this year during games. He famously once told Harbaugh he was going to hang a hundred on him. He hasn't beaten him since he said that. Uh, so say what you want to say about that, but yeah, I don't. I don't see the day is too nice argument. 
I don't I don't know where that comes from. I I don't get it. And I also don't know what being an asshole gets you. Because posting evidence to Twitter doesn't make you an asshole. In my opinion, not posting evidence to Twitter makes you an enabler. You are enabled. He didn't want to call out. He didn't want to call out his inner circle if it so happened to be people that he knows and doesn't want to ruin his relationships with. Just in case he may need to hire, wants to hire them down the road or whatever. The that's case well. That's is. not being nice. That's a business decision. Well, may, coaching coaching is just one big network. And this is about networking. And if you start cutting off your network, that might make it harder to hire people in the future. Days of players coach may not be the best recruits, but he'll coach the hell out of the kids who he chases after he misses his top targets. I, I don't agree with your premise there. Okay. Here, here's here's my issue. I'm I'm just gonna say this. I, I I called out Gene Smith. I called out Ryan Day. I called out the NCAA. Um, I called out basically the entire coaching fraternity. All right, I've called out everybody. So now now that I've been doing this, now that I've been doing this, and I've been pointing, let's point some fingers back at ourselves. Let's talk about Ohio State fans. Oh boy. Everyone's God, butthole. So it's so everyone's everyone's butthole just got real tight. So Every talk, it, was, it was so toxic. Like it, it was just you, like, Ohio State fans, going on Twitter, bad mouthing the program for the past two or three weeks, talking about how Day should be fired, talking about how you're not going to get any money if you come to Ohio State because NIL's completely broken. <laughs> You're putting that toxicity out into the Twitter sphere and the players see it. The players see it. We talked about this when we were talking about Dylan Rayola. Dylan Rayola wanted to come to Ohio State and play for Ryan Day. And all he's seen for the past two or three weeks are people on Twitter saying fire Ryan Day. I'm not saying that's why he's leaving. It's probably not. And it, honestly, there's factor? probably, maybe. yeah, it could be a factor. Even if it's a 10% factor in his decision, it's still a 10% factor in his decision. Furthermore, Ohio State fans, y'all are a bunch of fucking narcissists. Y'all are a bunch of fucking everything that happens in the in the college football sphere does not center around Ohio State. Everyone wants to know why why have we lost to Michigan? Have you considered that Michigan is a much better football team? Did you consider that? Why is everyone getting these why 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 is this quarterback going here instead of there? Uh, maybe his uncle's a coach there. See you, Chop. Maybe it has nothing to do with Ohio State. But it somewhat does, considering Ohio State is an annual historic powerhouse. Maybe. No. It doesn't. How many annual historic powerhouses are there in college football right now? Several. A handful. Three? More than three. More than three. Five or six. Five or six. And I mean, every, I mean, this, the every entire college football world does not center around Ohio State. I hate to break this to you. Sometimes, listen. Here, here's here, here's here's how this works. If Ohio State gets a top recruit, then it is because 
Ohio State coaches did everything white right and they're wonderful and we love them. If Ohio State. Are you saying Texas A&M is a powerhouse? I literally never said that. Tip in six minutes. OK. If Ohio State loses a recruit, then that is because the Ohio State coaches failed or NIL failed instead of like just saying maybe the other team did a good job. To a degree, well, let's to, let's look at to let's look at Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, Toledo. Y'all y'all watch Finn in the bowl game the other day. Remember when Finn lit us up and we were ready to throw the defense to the wolves again, instead of acknowledging that maybe Finn was just a good football player. You don't Ohio State fans don't acknowledge that the other teams exist. And that they also have good football players and they also have good recruiters and they also have good coaches and they also have good recruiting and they also have good facilities and they also have. Because Ohio State is the center of your world, you assume it's the center of everyone else's world, too, and it's not. I God, I hate being the bearer of bad news, guys, but the college football world does not revolve around Ohio State. Sometimes factors outside of Ohio State's control, such as a player's dad or uncle being hired on to a program or a assistant or the, the head coach gets the head coach of someone's high school gets an assistant coaching job at a college that isn't Ohio State or one at least one occasion was Ohio State. Is outside of Ohio State's control. If a kid wants to stay close to home because his girlfriend threatened to break up with him, if he goes all the way to Ohio. That's outside of Ohio State's control. Mm hmm. The yeah, fact that everybody else in college football is willing to cheat in NIL right now, and Ohio State isn't, isn't outside of Ohio State's control, but they are, they have been caught flat footed because I don't know if they expected literally everybody and their moms to become Texas AM this year. Would you have this platform if it wasn't for fanatics? We wouldn't make this platform if it weren't for fanatics i'm just saying that we need to turn the fingers back on ourselves sometimes as well we can criticize day and we can criticize gene and we can criticize the assistant coaches and we can you know lightly criticize players you know i'm not big on criticizing individual players we also have to criticize ourselves that's it. I'm not saying Ohio State fans in, you know, by and large are bad. We're a large fan base, so we have more idiots than most. But that's I mean, true I mean, of any large fan base. I mean, look at look at this, Jared. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, we, Ohio, yes, you are. No, Ohio I'm State, not. Ohio State missed, missed I'm also criticizing people. myself, Chop Daddy. I'm including myself in this criticism. Sorry, Kyle. I mean, in, in this class, yeah, Ohio State missed on a lot of top end recruits. That's why a lot of people are upset. Yes. Uh, yes. But Ohio State still has a top five class right now, Jared. Still has a top five class. Talk about how spoiled Ohio State is, spoiled with riches of the history that the program is. And you just, you say the name Ohio State and you're going to get an eye looked at from every top recruit in the country. That's just, that's the benefit of Ohio State here. So even having a, a bad, in quotation, uh, recruiting class here, still a fucking top five class here. And, and if I'm looking here on average, because pretty much everybody around Ohio State, Ohio State has 20 commits. We're still waiting, still waiting on the one from uh, uh, Jaden still, who has an uh Put in his signed LOI yet, but with adding him, Ohio State has 20 commits. Everybody else around 27, 26, 26, 25, 28. 
Ohio State has like the third best average per recruit. So Ohio State's getting really good talent still. It's not like, oh, they got 20 talents and they're all they're all three stars or whatever. No, they're still really, really good players here. So Ohio State, they're going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Yes, missed out on some positions that Ryan Day um, wishes that he got, um, mainly looking at that defensive defensive ends positions there, really wanting to get another commit somewhere in there. But overall, very, very good class here. Just We're just spoiled. And we we want we want it to be like NCAA football where we just are able to get all the top five star recruits that come to Ohio State. Never going to happen, but. Top, I do agree with you on that one. Let's talk about what we got, not what we missed. That is a good, good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, Ohio State has two uh, stellar. Well, not just two. They got, <laughs> they got, they got quite a few stellar uh, wide receivers here. Uh, Brandon Innes, uh, Noah Rogers, and Carnell Tate. And Bryson solid, Rogers, solid wide receivers, and Bryson Rogers as well too. Is anyone yeah, else yeah. getting BB vibes from Caden McDonald? Um, I I will have to follow up on that one. Mm hmm. And I'll tell you what, like, I, I think overall, um, like just looking at the, looking at all the positions here, Jared, Ohio State did pretty well when it came, come, came to the, um, to the offensive line. They got, they got their stud uh, in Luke Montgomery. Right. Can play and can pretty much play any position that you want him to. So if he, if he's a stud coming, coming into Ohio State, and there's a there's a spot for him. Put him put him somewhere, and then later on, maybe you can move him to left tackle or whatever the c case may be as well. And then you got uh, Joshua Padilla, also Ooh, as well. That was Padilla. Padilla, sorry. Um, <laughs> Padilla, excuse me. Before you. Austin reaches back through time <laughs> and punches me in the face. It is Padilla. Thank yeah, you, Austin. Um, we got we got a couple of uh, good corners as well here too. Uh, mainly looking at uh, Calvin and Jermaine as well, and the safety safety is pretty good. I mean, you got you got Hartford. A lot of, a lot of um, people are talking about Hartford and how uh, better than what he's rated as think that he's going to be a real stud at Ohio State. And yeah, I, I think I think the main thing, the main miss here, Jared, is um, oh yeah, and um Reese. I think Reese is going to be a stellar linebacker as well coming in. But I think I think probably the one the one miss, yeah, it's probably the defensive line, not getting that that really stud of a defensive end that we typically usually see every year that Ohio State gets. Not so much the case this year, but, but yeah. Well, overall, we did we did overall, get a we really good class though. Yes, we we did get um, uh, shoot, what's his name? Uh, I gotta I gotta look at the list. Yeah, why here, is he Garrett. not in your notes, Kyle? <laughs> where is he? Where is he at in the notes? Uh, no, not Jason Moore, the guy they got today from Indiana. It's Indiana, right? Uh, Mickens, thank you. Thank you, Chop Daddy Mickens. Um, we kind of knew Mickens was coming, so and, and we kind of yeah, Josh Mickens. We kind of knew Mickens was coming in the same way that we kind of knew that uh, Lee was leaving. Um, we were we were kind of hopeful that Lee. You know, we we knew we weren't going to get Damon Wilson today. That that ship sailed a couple weeks ago. Not getting Uwe Ungulale hurts. That that absolutely yeah, hurts. Kai and, and Kai and Lee as well going to yeah. um, Auburn. Yeah, yeah. Three. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's some that's some frost magic right there. Or excuse me, not frost, freeze. Different, different <laughs> freezing, different cold last name. Um, without Mateo, 
We don't get DJ. <laughs> DJ was never coming to Ohio State. It was never on anybody's radar except one loud idiot. I disagree. Well, you're wrong. Um, I don't know what on earth you would think. Do you think DJ would come, walk into Ohio State and de-seed to take over the positions of either of, especially, yeah, either of the Ohio State quarterbacks currently on the roster? You're crazy. You're crazy. What's 10-6 mean? Oh, the basketball game tip? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah, I mentioned about defensive line, but I think the other thing that you notice here, Jared, what's one position that Ohio State did not get in this in this recruiting class? They don't have a dedicated tackle offense. Well, they do. They have Miles Walker. He is... You know, and he's a late riser as far as his his recruiting rankings go. Um, mm -hmm. So he's, nope. you know, if we're, if we're going purely by recruiting rankings, which are imperfect, he is like the lowest rated member of the class. Um, and then, you know, you do have Luke Montgomery. Um, who could potentially be a tackle. Um, Wherever you need him. I don't know it, it. If you say to me, you know, he can play tackle or guard, then my mind immediately goes to he's a guard. <laughs> that's well, how, that's how where I my look at it, how, that's where my head I look goes. At it, Jared, how it look I look at it is if you have a if you have your tackles this year, they're your tackles. But Luke is so good that you want him in this year. You put him at guard, and then he could move out to tackle once once that position's open then that's that's sure. how i look at it right but all right let me let me put it this. when paris johnson jr signed with ohio state and he did exactly what you're talking about he's so good that they played him at guard and then bumped him out the tackle did we say he could play tackle or guard or did we say he's a tackle yeah um no running backs is well, is I think probably what you were getting at. However, well, here's um, the name to keep an eye out, for Jared. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's a good name to watch. Did the God? I I was preoccupied today, uh, so I I missed out on a lot of stuff. Uh, Did not, not 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 so much, Chop Daddy. Keep keep your eye on him. Keep your eye on him. He he did. There's an Ohio. Find... There's like he a did, late. He didn't. He did not sign today. So just keep your eyes, keep your eye open on that. Wasn't there like a late rising kid from Ohio who was committed to Buffalo? Did he actually sign with Buffalo today? Ohio Mr. Football is a running back. I believe that's who I'm talking about. I believe that is who I am talking about, Stuart. Um, Because there was talk today that if he didn't sign with Buffalo, that that would be, excuse me, chop. Well, it's the two people currently chatting right now. You both have chop in your name. So for what it's worth, because uh, y'all are a bunch in, of hooligans running back in uh, this year, Jared, in the, in the state of Ohio, 2023. I think he's somewhat, he's pretty lowly ranked again, because he's a late riser. Um, just, he had a great senior year, which is what, that's what that means. When I say someone's a late riser, that typically means he wasn't on a lot of people's radar and then had a great senior year is typically what quote unquote late riser means. It'd probably be faster if you just looked at the Buffalo class to see if there's a running back from Ohio on the Buffalo class. Um, let's see. I can't really do much in the <laughs> way of searching at the moment. Yeah. Either way, Jared, either way. Um, yeah, either way. 
So yeah, it, there's a, but whether we're, no matter who we're talking about, whether we're talking about Wilcox or whoever we're talking about, it is important to note that the recruiting period's not over yet. Recruiting period is not over yet. Lamar Sperling. That is, that's that's right. Um, is there two or one star recruits, or does it go NA to three star? I, I think typically, if you're not on a recruiting service. Like if you if you make it to the website, you're a three star. And if you don't make it to the website, then I think you are just like at that point considered maybe no, there, a there, two star. Yeah, there are two and one stars, but you don't see them that often. Yeah, it's well, they're just that's just like other, right? That that just kind of means you were off the radar. You weren't you. At no point did like the recruiting sites actually make you a profile. I mm -hmm. think is what essentially a two star is. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Someone feel free to fact check me. But yeah, if you make it on like the on three or twenty four seven website, you're base if if they go to the trouble of making you a profile, you're you're a three star. But you know there are tens of thousands of kids graduating who played basketball or football who uh just don't make it to the websites they had a profile for duan yeah of course they did duan i, I get that duan was underrated but all right so so let's let's finish off the episode here jared talking about what what should ohio state do moving forward like what is what is it that we that we learned from this early recruiting um, class here? And what should Ohio State focus on for the 2024 class? I mean, it's what we talked about at the beginning of the show, Kyle. How do you move forward in this new environment? If the NCAA isn't going to enforce the rules, should you still play by them? And that's not me asking a rhetorical question, and that's not me attempting to ask a leading question. That is me legitimately asking the question, because I'm I'm not saying I have the answer. I'm not saying I'm pushing for an answer. Uh, Sonny, Zach, we, uh, we do Wendy's bags in Columbus. Thank you very much. Yes. We do Wendy's bags in Columbus. Free tattoos, then. Unless you're Gerdeman and you get the uh, the uh, Burger King bag, <laughs> that's 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 an insane I, joke. <laughs> I love Tony. He has some of the worst food takes. <laughs> I love him. I love him to death. Skyline. That's strictly that's strictly uh, UC, which is by the way where Emory Jones is at now. Yeah, Emory Jones heading to the state of Ohio, just not Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. Emory Jones, um, and, and I, uh, I, I do Daniels, I do. the former, the former generational quarterback Daniels, uh, has just joined his like fifth school, fourth school. Um, not not all generational quarterbacks are actually generational. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if it if you say if there's a quote unquote generational quarterback every year, they aren't actually generational. I'm just tossing that out there. OK, that just means I, you're the best of that particular year. A, a generation is not a year. I do, I do want to mention, though, Jared, like a lot of people. Tathan better than JT Daniels. That is laughably false. Looking at the, because uh, people still are signing JT Daniels. Sorry, Kyle, go ahead. I, mean, every, I think the other thing a lot of people are looking at is the transfer portal. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys Ohio State was looking at, but, and yeah, they're treating that, they're treating that the same way as Ohio State losing out on, on the 2023 recruiting class as well, too. Missing, a on, missing asking, on a Johnny a Hurts. Asking about why, why, why isn't Ohio State looking at more players and why aren't they going after these? 
these top um, transfers da, 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 and all that. There, there's a reason why some of these other schools, like looking at Michigan, is the perfect example. They, they're losing a lot of players. Yeah. They, they need, they have gaps that they need to fill in, and they went to the transfer portal to fill in those gaps. Like they lost a lot of um, offensive linemen, and they're getting three from the right. transfer portal because they don't trust their recruiting class to fill in. Nor should Ohio they. State doesn't really, Ohio State doesn't really need to do Y'all, that. Maybe once, it, maybe once in a while you may get lucky like um, um, drawing, drawing a blank on his name, Jared, the um, transfer from Rutgers. You can just plug and play yeah. right there. That, that, that's rare to happen for Ohio State there. or um, But Ohio State not getting any transfers or maybe getting one or two or something, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, Ohio State needs to just focus on their recruiting class, period. Because that get that's that's just. I mean, but they Ohio, that, they are pursuing players in the portal. As far as I know, the the cornerback from Virginia is still in play, and then they straight up just missed for one reason or another on two tackles who both visited last weekend, who are our starting tackles next year? That's a great question. I don't have the answer to that. Yeah. Um, again, Oregon just straight up pulling a Texas A&M this year. And that's where Johnny went. And this leads us back to the same conversation we've been having all episode. Do you start doing what the other schools are doing? Is it still cheating if literally everybody except you is doing it? If the rule's not being enforced, is it still cheating? These are philosophical questions that we will not solve today. These are these are these are topics that have been debated for centuries. Not not strictly within the context of college football, mind you. Mm-hmm. But integrity is lost. I don't know, man. Sometimes a rule's not just, or sometimes the rule's not enforced for a reason because it's unenforceable. Um, and I'm not saying that the rules are unenforceable or that they're not, or that they're, you know, not just, um, quite frankly, as far as tampering goes, fucking tamper, fucking tamper, go for it. If no, if no, yeah, if no one is out here moderating, enforcing, and no one, no other coaches is going to rat out other coaches. I mean, do it then. Are we pursuing any kid from Texas A&M we missed last year? Um, I highly doubt they go after um, Denver Harris because of issues with, with with Denver Harrison issues the D end didn't he already um god I, I can't I can't do names tonight Adelier yeah Adelier thank you Kyle yeah he's I, he's he's at Sparty yeah um he he's already gone um he wasn't gonna come to Ohio State via the transfer portal it, he was going to go someplace where a starting spot was waiting for him. A starting spot was not waiting for him at Ohio State. Yeah, the the, the I think the one that's left really for Texas A and M is uh, that corner Harris, right? Who is an amazing talent, but allegedly a toxic personality. He's gotten to some legal issues, and yep. Um, but going back to what Kyle was talking about with NIL and, or excuse me, with the uh, transfer portal in Michigan. Y'all, if you think this recruiting class Ohio State just pulled in is bad, 
Go look at some of the Michigan classes in recent years. Th that is why. That is why. That Michigan is let's, so active in the transfer portal right now. Let's let's let's, let's look here, Jared. Currently, right now, their 2023 class, 16th. 11 spots behind Ohio State. 2022, 12. Okay. 2021, 13. 12 in 2020. And then they had a top 10. They had 10. They had the 10th best in, in 2019. And then in 2018, 22. Right. They've only they've only broken the top ten once in the past five years. I like the way Ohio State has historically handled handled the transfer portal. They don't just go out and get guys to get guys. Except maybe for well, one or two. There have been well, one I mean, or that, two. That's, I mean that, that that that's the point there, uh, Austin, is that there's, Other people are comparing. And I, I, know, I know. I know that you're you're joining here late, but uh, there's a lot of people complaining about Ohio State not going after the transfer portal. But that's because they don't need to. They don't need to. Well, they do need to, but they don't need to be hyperactive in it. You need to get like an offensive tackle and a cornerback. But. If you're a team filling a bunch of spots, you can be a lot more active in the. They need two offensive tackles and two corners. You know, I wouldn't say a running back. You can get just like a depth guy, though. Like. You can go get a depth guy at running back. Um, I don't want to go get a depth guy at tackle or corner. No, if you're going to go to get a tackle or a corner, you need to get a starter. Um. Two offensive tackles would be great. I just don't I don't think there's two more starters out there who are better than the guys you have. I'd love I would have loved to have gotten there was. Yes, there was. I would have loved to have gotten the two guys who visited last week, but they didn't come here. Um would love to get the cornerback from Virginia. Um Fentrell Hey, look at that. I actually pulled a name. I miss my Adderall so much. I need to go. I miss my Adderall. Um, if they can get, yeah, if they can get Cypress, I think, I think that will, I think that'll cool, cool a lot of Buckeye fans down a little bit. <laughs> but still, but like Jared said, nothing, nothing yet, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. And new guys will enter the portal. That, that That's sort of the thing you have to think about. Um, once the season officially ends, you'll see more guys hit the portal. Um, as some guys leave the portal that pushes other guys back out of those teams because they get pissed. Um, as recruiting continues. Yeah. The portal giveth, the portal taketh away. Exactly. Austin. I'm going to ask you, we've been asking this question the entire, isn't the portal different now though, Jared, there's dead proof for, for the portal. Now, I think there's a dead period for the portal. Uh, oh, dead period. God. I don't, I don't have as much blood in my body as I normally do. Um, the, don't you think, don't you think you can enter the portal between beginning or yeah, there, there, there is yes, that that sort of dead period, an opportunity to enter it. Yes, yes, but that's what I'm saying. Now that the recruiting classes are in, sorry, what was your question? Oh yeah, we've been asking this question all episode. We keep coming back to it. It's kind of our theme. What do you do if you are Gene Smith and Ryan Day? If literally everybody else is cheating, if they're tampering by contacting players who aren't in the portal, mm -hmm. if Car you are offering deals to kids 
If you're if you're offering NIL deals to kids who aren't yet on your roster, if everybody else is cheating mm -hmm. and you're playing by the rules, what is your next step? If you're falling behind because you're playing by the rules, but the rules aren't being enforced. Just a couple just a couple of weeks ago, Gene Smith's um pretty much not big, but pretty much um spoke out and said, Hey, we need help. Like to the fans, we need help. Bullshit. Um, don't don't donate donate to the the different um organizations or whatever. No. Uh, you're you're going to the wrong group there, Gene. You know you know who to talk to. You know which groups to go to. Not not to Buckeye Texas A&M isn't buying classes through GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. You know which groups to go to, Gene Smith. Yeah. In, go in Ryan Day and everybody else in the athletic department, you know where to go to. The problem, and yeah, uh, you continue to play by the rules because I'll lose a couple recruits if it means keeping my morals in line. I would rather be able to hold my head high and develop mid high four star guys if it means missing out on the high and five stars. Austin, I lean in your direction, but I, I, I don't know. And I also think it just depends. Like last year, a couple teams did it. This year, it feels like most of the teams did it. In five years, if you're no longer pulling in top 10 classes because you're playing by the rules and you're losing three or four games a year because you're still playing by the rules, at what point do you say, well, if no one else is playing by the rules, why the fuck should we? Yeah, I'm yeah. again, I'm I'm not taking a stance on this because I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, all right. I, I think I think we're just going round in circles. So I think I think this is a I have one more thing to I have one more to end the episode. I have one more thing to say. <laughs> no, <laughs> the foundation <laughs> who I am uh, not a fan of. For for Which reasons one? that Kyle just mentioned. Which one? The foundation. The foundation. Not a fan okay. of it. All right. All right. Just want to make sure we're clarifying that. Okay. The foundation. Not a fan. By the way, everyone, there's alcohol in Kyle's Coke. Don't don't let him fool you. He pulled it, he poured it into the can you, before we started no recording. Proof. And I want everyone no to know. You have no proof, Jared. By the way, Patrick sure, Mahomes sure was a three star. That's fine. Uh, okay, that's fine. You, you'll find you'll find those once in a while. Lauren if you, was a three star too. Here, here's if you look at, but that's my point. That okay, hold on. Let's let's back this up. <laughs> you a five star guy is a five star guy, not because they're necessarily that much better, but because they're that much less likely to like go bust. You're you're dealing with your with three star guys. You're dealing with a lot of guys who are like 50 50 shots. Maybe they make it. Maybe they don't. And well, it's probably with a three star guy, depending upon how, you know, a three star is a big range, right? It'd be like a 30 70 shot. There are better guys. Uh, there are better guys than those guys. Okay, so by the way, let, 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 let's, look at, let's look at it like this. If I, I saw a study once done on the NFL draft that basically said that the first round is made up of, and I'm, I'm going to summarize these numbers because I don't remember specifically what they were. It was something like 25% five stars, 25% four stars and 50% three stars in the first round of the NFL draft. 
Now, you could take those numbers. You could take those numbers and say, see, look, recruiting stars don't matter. But the opposite is true. Because there are only 32 five stars every year. There's only like 200 four stars every year. And there's thousands of three stars every year. So to point at the three stars, whether it be Patrick Mahomes or James Laurinaitis, it's, it's a bit of, it's kind of survivor's bias. Y'all can Google that to find out what survivor's bias is. If you want to, I need to talk shit on the foundation for a moment. If they haven't done it already, I guarantee they're going to do this. They're going to use everyone's anger today to market and say, to say, hey, if y'all, if y'all want to be like Texas A&M, make sure to sign up for our Patreon or whatever the fuck they're doing. Hey, everyone, we know this recruiting class went to shit, huh? Wow. Might want to sign up for our Patreon. That They're going to do it. I'm just letting you know right now, before they do it, they're going to do it. Because they're positioning themselves as the solution to the problem instead of what they are, which is the fucking problem. If you are of the belief that Ohio State's NIL program is broken, and I'll... I'm not going to debate that. I have my opinions on it, but it's not my point. Whether you believe it or don't believe it. The problem with the foundation is they are advertising themselves as the solution to the problem instead of what they are, which is the problem. If you believe that Ohio State's NIL program, Ohio State's NIL efforts are broken, then you should be looking at the foundation and saying you're the problem instead of looking at the foundation and saying you're the savior. Yeah, it is yeah, an yeah, organization exactly. yeah, yeah. run by billionaires and hundred millionaires who are asking you to donate 50 bucks. Yeah. You, you should, you should be asking them why has this failed instead of here's more money to fix it. Right. It's, it's ludicrous. It's hold them accountable is the problem instead of running to them for solutions. Yes. Okay, Kyle. Now I'm done. All right. <laughs> I'll stick with you guys on Patreon. I appreciate that chop daddy. How many three stars are first round picks versus four to five high? I, I didn't, I just say that. I think it's like 50% are four slash five stars in the first round. I don't know about first day. You said for, oh no, you did say first round and 50% are three stars. You may have typed that before I said it. Because they'd rather have a library with their name on it. Fucking bingo. They're out for influence. They're not trying to, uh, you know, may, maybe if they make NIL better at Ohio State, maybe that's a good thing too. Yeah, they may, but, the, but they're out for influence. They're out to network with their billionaire buddies. Two thirds, two thirds, Jared, of the draft, of the first, first round draft picks are four stars or better. So that means, okay, it means about, th about 33, 35% are three stars or lower. Okay. Well, they're three stars. <laughs> let's let's be real they're three stars um uh, the the 20 okay specifically the 2022 draft 14 four stars six five stars 12 three stars or less that is a pretty typical layout and again you could use that to say stars don't matter but it's actually telling the opposite of the truth Again, because the pools of players are so much smaller at five and three star. 
All right. Yep. That's the end of the episode. Kyle, do you have any parting thoughts for us or anything else you want to say in Kyle's corner? How about, how about some good news for former, former Buckeye um, players? Looking at, looking at Terry McLaurin, Nick Bosa and Joe Burrow who are, who have been selected to the Pro Bowl. We'll point out, by the way, that Joe Burrow was a four-star player. Unlike what, um, I can only think of uh, what Herb Street said during the national championship game, where he called him a two-star player. Because yeah, and, so was, and so was Terry <laughs> McLaurin, was a four-star as well. Oh, how about that? Uh, barely a, barely a four-star, mind you. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't think so, Austin. I don't think we've mentioned that on the podcast yet. I don't, I think it broke. I think that news broke after we recorded on Sunday. Uh, yeah. Oh. Avery Henry, uh, offensive tackle at Ohio state was a part of last year's recruiting class, um, has cancer. There's no, there's no easy way of saying that. So I'll just say it. Um, he is very publicly upbeat. Um, if you've been on, if you've been with the Sloopcast for a minute, you know that uh, Avery Henry holds a special position in in my fandom because uh, we are of the same high school. Um, so I'm obviously wishing him, his family, all the best. Um, the good news is is that he's at Ohio State. He'll be taken care of financially through this. I believe since he's, he's he, even though it's not a football injury, um, I almost certain that the university is still going to treat him, you know, as part of, I want to say insurance or whatever. Like, why is the ant doing a GoFundMe then? God, am I wrong? Or is that for other expenses? Um, is Ohio State not footing the bill? Transportation, travel. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge deal, too. That's why, like, I'm not a big fan of McDonald's as an organization, but that's why the Ronald McDonald houses are so important, because they provide, isn't he on campus? He is, yes. But the family, I presume, maybe is part of that issue. Guys, I don't know. I have all the details. Um, but. I sure do hope that the university is taking care of his medical bills because Lord knows 100%. that's, I'm sorry, Kyle, what? I said hundred percent, hundred percent. You hope that. And I hope that. Okay. It's all being covered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because like cancer treatment will ruin you financially way harder than an education will. Um, so I just, I hope that he's taken care of in all of that. And if he's not being taken care of, I'd give my money to that five times over before I gave money to the fucking foundation. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's a, thank you for reminding me to, to say that Austin. It's, it's one, it's one of those things where if the news breaks like right up close to one of our episodes, um, it, it sometimes gets lost in the next episode. So you're the fucking producer. No, you're the fucking producer. Um, yeah, okay, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, tonight's music, uh, just like Monday, will be brought to you by a band, I believe, out of Dayton called Abertooth Lincoln. Abertooth Lincoln, <laughs> Jared singing, God, no, you do not want that. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course. Support your local podcasters once again, and Merry Christmas. And once again, this is Abertooth Lincoln. <laughs>